Well, this really started as two separate uh, projects uh, examining how state government was working. Uh, for my part, uh, it was looking at uh, how contracts were being awarded. Uh, Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam came into office promising to run government like a business. So we were trying to figure out in practicality, what did that mean? Well, it turns out it meant that contracts were being awarded without bidding or with very little bidding to companies that seem to have connections. And the more we dug into that, the more questions that you know, we discovered uh, about how these companies were being allowed to profit off of uh, taxpayer dollars. When the Haslam administration decided to outsource the day-to-day -day management of state buildings, it awarded a $330 million contract to Jones Lang LaSalle. JLL is a multinational corporation that our investigation discovered candidate Bill Haslam once listed among his major investments. But even the fact that he has invested one time, there's a relationship there. Invoices shows JLL stands to make a lot of money off its recommendation to demolish the Cordell Hall and sell all four other state buildings. If I were JLL and I got money for each building that I said to tear down and then I got to oversee that and get money and then I got to oversee leasing space and I got money for that. I could find lots of places for people to go. I could find lots of buildings to tear down. And wrote, this was negotiated with JLL with no opportunity for anyone else to offer their services. That JLL cannot be trusted to give impartial advice when it has a profit motive. I don't even, I'm not sure I even understand that comment. The key thing is that when the government asks for advice, it should be getting that advice from someone who doesn't have a stake in the outcome. I started out doing an environmental story. A coal company wanted to mine on a, a state wildlife area. And we discovered that the coal company hired a prominent lobbyist that had not registered, no one knew about it. And as we looked more closely, this lobbyist is on the private payroll of the governor. He had run his campaign and the governor was paying him privately for advice. So as we started looking more into it, we just thought that was something that was worthy of a great deal of scrutiny. And it led us to even more sort of questions of, of influence. We found the Ingram Group failed to list Hillsborough resources. Did you not want people to know you were representing this company? Hmm, absolutely not. I mean. No reason for us to hide the ball. I mean, that's never happened before. We just, it was just an inadvertent oversight. It appears that the oil and gas industry is using very powerful lobbyists with close connections to get this kind of uh, mineral lease approved. If you looked at how the contracts were being awarded, and if you looked at how the lobbyist was exercise, exercising his influence, you really had a, a really fascinating picture about how state government really worked. For the past year, our News Channel 5 investigates team has taken a hard look at how your state government really works. That's right, more than three dozen stories that have triggered a statewide debate, prompted legislative hearings, and led to a scathing state audit. And now there are calls for reform. These aren't maybe the sexiest stories in the world, but, but the moniker stories that matter. To have people recognize that this was important and to celebrate that, it means, it means a lot. You aspire to do great work, regardless of whether it wins the Peabody or not.